Hi everybody, it's Claire and um, welcome to what is going to be the first of um, a five-part tutorial to recreate this beautiful page from Joanna Basford's World of Flowers. It's a while since I've done a multi-part tutorial, uh, simply I'm self-employed so at the moment I'm in contract, I don't have an awful lot of time other than on weekends so it's quite a while since we've done a multi-part tutorial but I'm looking forward to showing you this one. Um, the reason is that I'm an uh, administrator for the Joanna Basford Your Pages Facebook group and Joanna Basford uh, dedicated this particular design to our Facebook group so I thought it merited something a little bit special in terms of a, a, a multiple tutorial uh, full page colour along. So it won't be a live colour along, all of these videos will be just posted for you to watch at your leisure on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. And what we're going to be doing, as I say, we're going to be we're going to be recreating this and I'm going to be doing it in various stages. So today, the first tutorial, we're going to be looking at um, actually laying in the, the pencil drawing that you see in the background. We're going to look at recreating the sun and the peach dawn uh, background. And then we'll have a little look at these clouds. And um, you might be able to see, pick up on the camera that I've got some white Posca paint clouds also in the background behind these drawn in ones so I'll uh, show you how what to do with those as well. In terms of the tutorials going forward I think um, the second one we will concentrate on the river and this is the the piece of the design that I've had the most compliments on. Um, thank you so much for that it's a really easy technique and I'm sure you'll you'll watch along with me doing that. The third tutorial, I think we'll have a look at the, the hills and um, the, the stones and the, the fir trees. And then the last two tutorials, four and five, I think we'll have a look. We'll break into two and we'll kind of do one half of the page of the flowers and then we'll do the other half of the page with the flowers. And I will give you all of the, every single palette that you see on here, I will give you the colours as we go along. I'm using Prismacolor pencils. I'm using an awful lot of colours of Prismacolor pencils, so I'm not going to be able to give you alternatives and polychromos because honestly, when, when we go through, you'll understand why there's just so many different colours that I'm using. But I'm sure that you will be able to find um, equivalent colours in your which, whichever kind of brand of, of palette pencils you have. So you will have seen this posted, I think, in the last uh, 24 hours in the various um, Facebook groups that I belong to. As I say, I've already mentioned the, the Joanna Basford Your Pages site. It's been on Instagram as well. Um, I'll just give a shout out to the Create and Colour group and uh, Passionista Colorista, Isabel Vestermark. I've also posted it um, with the generous permission of Colour with Claire, who is Claire Eady, one of my good friends and a very talented colorist. And um, also the Just Joanna Basford Colouring Gallery. Thank you, Lynette, for letting me post there. Now, one, one thing I do want to say before I, I start the tutorial is that um, this is in a practice book. I'm actually going to be working in the uh, original World of Flowers that Joanna signed for me and sent me. But clearly when I finish, we'll have um, a, a duplicate page. And there's a really good friend of mine uh, called Rashna Gazda who is um, a, a teacher, a music teacher and a school teacher in Pakistan. And she does some absolutely brilliant work for a local children's cancer hospital. It's called the Indus, I-N-D-U-S, Children's Cancer Hospital in Pakistan. Uh, it's a cause close to my heart. i have um, a cancer survivor myself. And I just think that what she does in terms of fundraising is absolutely immense. And she's asked me to kind of help her with designs in the past that they can put up on the walls to cheer the patients up etc and what I'll be doing this time is when when we finished the the the, the duplicate page this original I'm going to be posting off to Rashnal so that she can hang it up in the hospital and hopefully cheer the cheer the children up now they do actually have a website as well the Indus Children's Hospital the cancer hospital they do have a website which you can just get on google and you can make a donation there if you wanted to okay Right, on with the tutorial. So like I say, this is my practice book and I'm just going to put this out the way and I'm going to put it up here, but you won't be able to see it off shot, but I'm just going to put it up here for myself for reference because we've got quite a lot to get through today. And you will see underneath my, my beautiful, uh, my own World of Flowers book uh, that Joanna sent me. You can see um, I, I coloured the cover. We did a tutorial on this, I think a few weeks ago in terms of the background and a few of the, uh, the neon glow 
flowers. So if you wanted to have a look at that, there's a separate tutorial for that. So let me just find the page. Okay, so you can see that Joanna signed this for me, which is so nice. I'm just going to find the page. Here we are. Okay. So like I say, this was the page Joanna dedicated to the Your Pages um, group. What we did was um, Bex Harris, one of our administrators, uh, collated and coordinated a uh, Joanna Basford art book from all of our members. So we all coloured various pages, sent them all off to Bex. She put them into a book and sent them to Joanna. And Joanna was so thrilled that when she, um, when she was designing World of Flowers, she decided that she was going to dedicate this particular page to, to our Facebook group. So, what do I want to start with? Um, you can see I've got some basic kit here. Uh, I've got my pencils up here out of shot, which I'll go through as we get to them, my coloured pencils. Let me just explain what I've got. I've got um, my Stedler Black Pigment Fine Liner. It's a 0.2 nib. The reason I've picked this um, size nib is because I've seen Joanna ink some of her work online and this is the, uh, the, the size of tip that she uses to ink her work with. What we're going to be doing is just doing some um, some additional work on the outline at first, and I just want uh, to match the thickness of the of the uh, of the line to what she's already got on the page. I've also got um, my white Posca paint pen. It can be any size. I've just got um, a one PC, a one millimeter bullet shaped tip, and that's for the the clouds in the background. The, we, there are some drawn clouds, but this is just in the background as well. We, we put some little fluffy background clouds in. I've also got a pencil, um, just a standard pencil. It's a 2B. The reason I've picked quite a soft pencil, this is a Faber-Castell one, doesn't have to be a Faber-Castell pencil. It just has to be a pretty soft lead because I don't want to leave um, a scratchy line on the page. When I come to colour the background in, once I've drawn it, I want to be able to rub it out a little bit without having any scratches on the page. So you need a soft pencil. I've also got um, just a, a standard eraser, like a, it's kind of like a, a colour remove uh, putty gel eraser. And then I've got a penny, a UK penny, and that's what we're going to use to uh, to draw the sun. You can use absolutely anything, anything that's round of about that size. I know that you guys in America have a, a one cent piece. Clearly, you can use any coin. It just needs to be, if I put that on the palm of my hand, it just needs to be roughly about that size. And I've got a little, I've got a couple of pieces of um, clean kitchen paper towel. OK, so what we're going to start with is, because this is a wreath, and we're going to be colouring in a background, you might see that there are tiny little spaces where the design doesn't quite make a full circle. So if I'm colouring my sky up to here, it's got a tiny little gap. So all I'm going to do is quickly, in all of those little spaces, just kind of make, follow just whatever, whatever design Joanna's got next to it. So I'm just doing tiny little petals here, just so that we get kind of like a, a a fully enclosed circle so that when the sky comes up to here it's not kind of just ending without a frame if you know what I mean so I'm just going to put myself in just a little branch just freehand with my 0.2 pigment fine liner just at random just so I've got a complete frame Okay, though I'm not the best drawer in the world, but you'll be fine because it's just adding little tiny uh, petals and leaves just to complete that circle. Um, so I'm looking down here. There's a gap just here, so I'm going to just extend that leaf out there. The fuchsia, I just need to put a little line there. Uh, a little tiny circle here. Is that everything? I'm just looking at my original. I think, yeah, I think what I've got, what I did as well is I added an extra leaf here so that it kind of made the circle, if you know what I mean. It made it like a circle. So I'm just gonna replicate these designs. And this is quite nice because you can do this at random and it will be just completely your own original little piece of the page. 
Uh, like I said, I've got my, my, my uh, original for reference up here. So what do I need to do? I just need to put a little leaf in there. And I need to put a little leaf in here. So I'm really just copying the leaves that Joanna's put in close by. Like I say, just to make it kind of like a complete full circle as much as possible so that when I put my background in, I'm colouring up to an edge, if that makes sense. Okay, so I can put that down for now. Now what I want to do is I'm going to start with the sun. So I've got my little coin and what I want to do is I want to put it in the middle. But what I want to do is I kind of I don't want it bang in the middle. I kind of want it up a little bit. So I'm going to, if you have a look at, uh, yes, this flower is quite a good one. So this flower is roughly the same size. So if you kind of align it to that, you'll be roughly in the right place. OK, and then literally all we're going to do is. This isn't art 101. It's literally just how I get around not being able to draw very well. Okay, so we have a sun there. Okay, really basic, very, very basic. Now, what I wanted, if I just grab you the original again, can you see that I put, I just thought it was a nice little effect to have some clouds across the sun. So, let's put the clouds in. Let's put the clouds in. And I'm just going to, they're just kind of wispy little. And again, this can be completely random to you. You can put your clouds wherever you want. So I'm just going to rub out that tiny little bit of the sun. And I should say that I'm hardly pressing on the page with my pencil. Because when I come to colour these in, I want to be able to almost not see them behind the, the, the coloured pencil. OK, so again, let's just put a little cloud drifting over the sun here. And don't be afraid to just kind of play with it. The amount of times I rubbed out the original you wouldn't believe just until I was kind of happy with the, the shape and the placement. You don't have to get it right first time. OK, then I think we'll just put in maybe a couple here. Like that. Just a little double one there. Just so that it looks like, because remember, this is a dawn scene. So we just want some clouds kind of um, moving across that beautiful dawn sunshine. And these will not be exactly to the original. So every single page that you do will be completely your own, which I think is rather nice. I think what I'll do is I'm just looking at what you can see. And because this is quite light, I think what I'll do is just zoom you in a little bit so that you can see better what I'm doing. Let me just, there we go, that might be better for you to see, okay? Um, right, okay, I think we'll leave the clouds like that. Let me just have a look at my original and see what we need to do next. So let's put in the, the hills and I just refer back refer you back to this again. Can you see I've got kind of four I've got kind of four layers of hills going off into the background. So what I want to do is I'm going to put the river in and then I'm going to put these background layers of hills in just gently with my 2B pencil. And again, the river can be any shape you want it to be, but I'm just going to try and stick to roughly what I did before. So if you've watched any of my other tutorials, you may have seen one on perspective. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take just maybe a centimetre under the sun. We're going to take a little vanishing point on the horizon. Just put a tiny dot. And that is where, if you went back into the picture, the river would disappear on the horizon line. OK, so I'm just going to make sure that you can see where I'm drawing down to because I'm going to be drawing down over a little bit. OK, so just freehand. And like I say, don't be afraid if you're not quite happy with it. Just gently, 
just make yourself kind of an interesting little riverbank and we're going to get wider as it comes forward because remember it's in perspective so I'm just going to take it I think this riverbank just gently just lightly 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 in pencil okay and I'm just being quiet because I'm looking at my original while I'm drawing this okay. and then what we, what we do want to do when we come around this corner is just for interest I put in like a little a little um, bank of uh, rocks and pebbles so I'm just going to take this little bit further out into the stream like that and then again we will go out I think to about here and I'm hardly pressing on the page because I don't want to see the lines once I colour it in. Okay, so you've kind of got roughly a river. And I'm just going to check. Yes, you can just about see that, I think, because I'm not pressing very hard. Uh, and then what we'll do is, I think, just so we know that we're going to leave this in future tutorials. I'm just going to put that little line in there. Like that and I'm sure there will be some of you out there that will absolutely nail this drawing um I I, I really struggle with my freehand drawing really I, I truly do so if you, you you will be able to do this I absolutely promise you right we're going to go back to the top of the river and I'm going to put in what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in this very back hill this very back valley so I'm going to just take it across the river like that and just kind of make it a bit interesting and kind of make it a bit bumpy and I'm going to go up to about here like that okay uh, same on the other side now I want to kind of make it if I just put my pencil there I want to kind of make it roughly the same height so have a look at where you are on your drawing over here and just so it's about it's around about here so I know if I kind of just make a little bit of a a rocky line there and just bring it down and there we go we've got our first little um background hill in now I'm going to make think think about perspective again let me just get this and I'll explain what I mean think about perspective so the further you get back into the distance the uh the, the kind of the more squished up it will it will seem if i let me just do a quick demonstration of what i mean i've got a piece of paper here so horizon line sky earth vanishing point okay now if i was to draw a train track going off into the distance, what you would find is that the tracks, as they got further back, would get closer together, like that. Now what we want to recreate is that kind of effect. So can you see, have you noticed, this is not a very wide line and it's getting wider the more we get towards the front of the picture. And that will really help with your perspective. It will really help it make, sorry, it will really help you make it look like it's got depth. So this first hill that we're going to put in isn't going to be very wide. So from there to there isn't going to be very wide because it's in the distance. So again, I'm just going to kind of maybe take it to around about here. And just kind of, you know, make it interesting. Leave it a little bit of kind of a rocky outline like that and then we do the same on the other side again think about where this is in terms of height and go across to the other side now this time we'll probably take it into the flowers up here I'm just checking that you can still see what I'm doing yeah so we'll, we'll take it into the flowers up here so apologies if my arm gets in the way 
Again, not very wide. It's in the distance. There we go. Okay. So the second one we want to put in is going to be a little bit wider. So the second kind of hill we're going to put in is going to be a little bit wider. So uh, probably maybe about here. I'm going to take it behind the daffodil. So this daffodil here, we're going to take it behind the daffodil. Like that. Okay. And then this one, we're just going to... So this is this this kind of area here is going to be little pebbles. So what I'll do is I'll just put the forefront, I think, sort of up towards this butterfly. Like that. OK, so we've got one, two, three, four hills. OK, now let me just quickly repeat that on the other side. And like I say, it can be at absolutely random to you you can put three layers in i would recommend you do four four hills because then you'll get the full effect of the color palettes i'm going to show you but i'm absolutely certain that you will be able to draw better than me okay so can you see yes i think you can i think you can see that now then, think, Claire, is there anything else we want to put in, in terms of the pencil at the moment? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. I'll tell you what it is. Um, just where the, the, the riverbank um, bends in this direction, you would kind of see a tiny little um, layer of soil. So it wouldn't just be completely flat. So just here... So on these curves, you wouldn't see it where it curves around there because it'd be hidden, it'd be pointed in that direction. But just where you've got these curves here, we're going to put a tiny, and see I've made that a little bit wide, so don't be afraid to go back and rub it out. We're just going to put in a tiny little river bank here. Okay, so again, you would kind of see it from here. And it would disappear as it comes around here. And then again on our little, what will be the pebble beach. You can hear Freckle in the background. And then we would see it as it comes around this corner. So this is just going to be kind of like a little river bank when we come to put the, uh, the brown in of that colour. Okay. Now what I did think about in the original drawing was putting rocks in the river. The reason I didn't was because it would have got in the way of this beautiful sunshine reflection. So by all means, if you want to put rocks in the river, it's entirely up to you. I, would, I encourage you to be completely original with your version of this, but just be aware it might make it difficult for you when you come to put in this centre reflection colour because you'd kind of be colouring around any rocks that you put in the river. Right, I think, I think, I think, we can start colouring in. And we're going to start with the sun. We're going to start with the sun. So let me tell you what colours I've got out for the beautiful sun. So I have, um, this is the one and only uh, non-prismacolor pencil that we'll be using. So we're using a Derwent Drawing Chinese White. You don't have to have this pencil. You just need um, a very, very uh, white uh, pencil, almost like a Carbothello pastel white pencil. I'm not using my Prismacolor uh, white. You can do if you want, but I just find this is this one, this particular one, this Chinese white 7200 is whiter than the page, the, the paper of the page, and I just find it really useful. Then I've got my Prismacolor pencil, so dark to light. I've got Canary Yellow PC916. I have Lemon Yellow, she says, picking the decor. So Lemon Yellow, I have PC915. I have Deco Yellow, which is PC1011, and uh, my cream colour pencil. Okay, now then, before I start, I'm just going to check that this is in the right place for the sun. So forgive me for moving around a little bit, but I just want to check that that is kind of centre shot so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Right. Okay. 
So we're going to start with the uh, canary yellow, Prismacolor canary yellow. And what I'm going to do is actually I've got my uh, my Tombow just mono eraser. And all I'm going to do is I don't want to rub out this sun altogether, but I'm just going to just going to check the tips clean, actually. Actually, I might do it with my gum eraser. I'm just going to gently, gently, gently. I still want to see where the sun is going to be. But I don't want that harsh pencil outline. So I can still see where I need to put in this canary yellow outline. Like that. So I can still get the perfect circle of the sun disc. But you can't really see the pencil underneath, which is what we're, what we're after. Okay. Um, now, if you've seen me blend before, this is really straightforward blending. So I'm just going to scumble in, light touch, tiny little circles, light touch. Just kind of a little inner circle here. So that outline was, was quite a firm touch, I should have said, sorry. Okay, and then everything behind the line can get a medium firm pressure. And what we want is for the inner, the inside of the sun to be the brightest. So we're starting with the deeper colours on the outside. So don't go over your little blend line. Don't go over your little scumble blend line. Okay. And don't go over your clouds either. So leave, do, uh, pull around the, the little wisps, wisps of cloud that you've left going across the sun. Okay. I can go to my lemon yellow. Again, just scumble over that original blend line. Little circles. Like that. Maybe just a couple of millimetres, a millimetre of that. Because remember, it's only a penny size and we've got four colours, so you don't want to take it too far into the middle, but you do want to see the colour getting whiter and whiter and lighter and lighter. And I will try and list all these palettes in the descriptions of the tutorials as I go along, so don't worry about writing them down. Okay, we'll go to uh, Deco Yellow. Same thing again, medium firm. Scumble in some little circles. Again, it's a little bit lighter than the, the lemon yellow. And don't forget, you can go, I, I won't be doing it because the, the tutorial is going to be long enough as it is, but you can go back and just play with your blend lines as, till your heart's content. Uh, cream. And we're going to leave a tiny bit in the middle for that bright white. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the white almost as a blender pencil and drag some of the colour into the middle but leave it bright white. And you could actually, I mean, you could leave it like that if you wanted to, but I just think it's nice to kind of drag some of the colour in a little bit. So firm pressure. Oh, can you see? Now, here's a good, here's a good thing. So I didn't check the tip of my pencil and it has a little bit of blue on. And you can, you might not be able to see that on the video, but you might be able to. Don't panic. Nothing isn't fixable. Okay. So I have just got my, um, my little electric eraser and all I'm going to do is gently just brush away the blue and it's gone. So having cleaned the tip this time, I'm just going to drag some of that colour into the very centre but the very centre will still be bright white. So don't go out and look at the sun because that's probably not very healthy for you but you know, when you when the, the, the centre of the sun is just bright white, that, that's how we get that effect, just with this really, really simple um, blending with the, the, the bright white Chinese white pencil. OK, now we can start on the dawn sunrise background because we'll do the we'll do the clouds last, I think. So what I've got is. My salmon, salmon pink which is PC1001. I have my uh, light peach, PC927. I have my cloud blue, PC1023. I have my uh, powder blue, which is 1087. And we're going out from the sun in this direction with these, with these colours. I have my uh, blue slate, which is, it's a little shorty, but it doesn't matter, PC1024. 
I have my Caribbean Sea, which is PC1103. And finally, which will be kind of right at the outside, I have my Blue Lake, which is 1102. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm not I'll, I'll take you up to kind of about here and then you'll you'll get what you have to do to be able to finish off blending the palette because this putting sky into this detail takes a lot of time and we're not going to have time to do that on the tutorial but it will be exactly the same technique as what I'm going to show you in terms of blending and colours until we get up to about here okay so I'm going to put these to one side and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start so let me just refer you back to this again so we're starting here and we're working out over okay so the deepest is the salmon pink which is the outline around the sun so gently 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 follow the circle of the sun scumble in a little blend line try and keep my hand out of the way of the the shot okay like that then inside slightly firmer still scumbling not pressing all that hard but just medium firm just because this will help you with a seamless blend line okay and then we're gonna in a firm pressure don't go over the blend lines that you've made just color this beautiful dawn haze around the sun and it could actually work quite well with um kind of um sunset as well they're, they're quite nice sunset colors but to me a sunset would be um not kind of pastel colors not not um, not subtle colours, a, a sunset would be kind of vibrant yellows, whereas this is kind of like a, a more of a subtle peach colour. So to me it's a it's a sunrise rather than a sunset. And I did actually use this palette on the double page in the World of Flowers at the back. Actually I might be able to show you. I think it's in this book. Yes, so I did actually use the Dawn palette for this beautiful double spread as well now I've moved the page you see so I need to double check that you're still that you can still see what I'm doing yes you can okay and you see because we almost rubbed out that line of the sun you can't see that pencil mark when you when you go over it in pencil which is what you want because you don't want to you don't really want to see harsh pencil lines so I'm going to put that to one side. I'm going to go to my light peach and around about a centimetre outside, just gently, 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 because remember this blend line, this next blend line will be going to blue. So it's a colour jump. So we need to be very careful with this. So just lightly follow the circle of the sun. And these tutorials do take an awful lot of preparation and an awful lot of planning. So bear with me if it's if the five parts are going to be over a few weekends, it'd probably be two or three weekends worth. Because like I say, I, I, I'm working full time at the moment during the week on something pretty major in the UK. I'm working on Brexit. I can almost hear your intake of gasp of breath. Um... Yes, okay, so again, inside this, slightly firmer, scumbling in, tiny circles, inside the line that you've just kind of made, slightly firmer. And I think what I'll do at this point, just before we go on any further, because I don't want to start smudging the drawing, I'm just going to take off 
the clouds. And I don't want to take off any colour that I've put down, so I'm just going to do it now. I'm just going to gently rub off some of the harsh line of the clouds. Just so that I can still see where I need to put the, the colour down when I come to colour them in. But just so they're not harsh as I'm going out doing the, the dawn, the dawn palette. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the salmon pink side this time. So just over the blend line that you left before, in a pretty firm hand. And because we left the layers of the various touches with the salmon pink, you'll find that when you scumble in this light peach over those blend lines, it just helps you get that seamless change in colour. Okay. And then what we can do is, in the space that we've got left, we can just do this in firm pressure. So this little line that you've got left, we can just do this in firm pressure. So can you see how well already that is blended, just taking care with those rings that we put down? And like I say, you can go back and go back until you're completely happy with your colour change. And I did do a tutorial on advanced blending, so this technique, but on a much larger space, a much larger background space. And that's the most recent tutorial if you wanted to have a kind of have a practice with that first. So I'm just going to go back to my salmon pink and just gently, 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 just scumble lightly over that change line. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to go to our cloud blue. Okay. This is the lightest of our blues. Again, just gently follow the pattern of the sun. And there are, I think, one, two, three, yeah, there are seven colours in this Dawn palette. So always bear in mind, in the, in the back of your mind, you've got you've got a finite um, space here. So to get kind of um, an even colour change, so you don't want like a, a massive space with very light blue and then a tiny space with dark blue. Just bear in mind all the time that you want to kind of break this sizing up equally into seven. And you can measure it out if you wanted to. I've, I've done that before. Okay, again, behind it, slightly firmer. And then what we'll do is we'll go into the peach and we'll be really careful because it's a colour change, but it's also a palette change. You're going from an orange to a blue. Right, so on the edge of this very light peach, gently, gently, gently with this blue, this cloud blue. Gently, gently. Just take it into that light peach colour. The very outside of the light peach that we did so carefully. Like that. Okay. And then inside here, we can be a little bit firmer. Again, try to keep it in circles because it'll help you blend. Scumble, little tiny circles. Scumble along as Lynette says. Scumble along with Claire. Lynette Dalton, she's the administrator of the, uh, the Just Joanna Basford colouring gallery. 
another talented colorist and a lovely lady. Puts a lot of time and effort into our group. Okay. Now we're just going to blend away this line. So we're just going to, in this instance, we're just going to take the peach up into the blue a little bit. Medium firm. Apologies if my hand's getting in the way a little bit. So you've got that beautiful ring of orange around the sun, well, peach. And then it goes into the, the light blue morning sky. go back to the cloud blue and you can put as many layers on, on this as you want and you might want to spend some time particularly with this color change as I say because you're going from one color to another not just a shade of a particular blue or a shade of a particular peach you're going from peach to blue so just take your time so I'm going to leave that there for the sake of the, the length of the tutorial but like I say play 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 until you're happy with it okay so I'm going to go to my powder blue Remembering not to colour over these clouds that we've drawn in. Okay, same thing. And this is why I said at the start that we won't be going right up into this pattern. Because you'll just follow the palette through that I've given you. And then when you come to kind of your darkest Caribbean Sea and Blue Lake, you just need to be careful when you're in these all of these little these little details up here. But like I say, that it'll take too long to do it on the tutorial. So this is why I'm only going to do this colour and the next colour. And then you can just apply the same technique. But just in those deeper colours. And you can take your time in terms of going around the detail of the lovely flowers. Going over that powder blue, uh, sorry, the cloud blue, just gently. So the cloud blue that we laid down before. Okay. So you can see that this is a slightly deeper blue, but it's still it's still almost a pastel blue. It's still very subtle. So medium firm pressure now. And the sun keeps going in and out. I've got a window on my left hand side in the art stroke dining room. And the sun keeps going in and out, so apologies if the if the light on the page keeps changing. Okay, back to our cloud blue. Firm pressure. I'm just gonna blend over this this line here. And can you see just by taking your time with those various pressure rings just really bears dividends when you when you come to have blended it. Right, where do we want to go next? We want to go to blue slate. So I can put my cloud blue down. I'm just going to keep my powder blue in my hand. Uh, so again, here we are, round about here. Just following the circle by eye and it doesn't have to be exact because you're blending so it's not like you've got really harsh lines of a of a semicircle so it doesn't have to be exact just take it down to the, the top of the hill there okay again Inside. Slightly firmer. Like that. 
And we'll go back to the cloud blue, just gently scumble over the blend line of the uh, sorry, powder blue. The powder blue was the last one we did. Just gently scumble, scumble over that line. Gently, gently. Okay. And then everything else can get a little bit of a firmer touch, so pretty firm. Medium firm. And don't worry if you can see a line, we're going to go back. My wrist is at a funny angle now, so bear with me. I've actually done like a little bit too firm a pressure there, so I'm just going to go back. Take that off. Because my wrist's at a funny angle, you see. If I was doing this with it with it not being on the tutorial, I'd probably have twisted my book around a little bit, but I don't want to move it out of shot for you. Right, there we are. Now I'm going to go back to the powder blue. Firm pressure. Blend this line away. You see how that just disappears? Because we've put the layers underneath. Easy. Just practice. And remember, these are Prismacolor pencils, so they're wax-based. So I'm not using a blender pencil here because they blend perfectly well on their own. And sometimes I actually think, with these pencils anyway, a blender pencil removes pigment from the page where you don't want it to be removed from, which is why I don't tend to use one. But by all means, if you, if you like using your blender pencil, blend away. Let's go back to the blue slit. Just gently, 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 over anywhere that you think just needs that little bit of an extra smoothing out. Okay, so I think we'll leave that there. And I'm going to just show you some extra little things. So, like I say, I would continue with that um, with my Caribbean blue next and then my blue lake um, into the top of the wreath here. Okay. So I think let's have a look at the clouds, the drawn in clouds, that is. Uh, what am I doing? What do I need? I need? This and I need my grey pencils. So what I've got is I've got some cool greys. I've got 70% cool grey, PC1065. I have 50% uh, cool grey, PC1063. I have 50% cool grey, uh, sorry. Let's start that again, shall we? Tongue twisted. Cool Grays, 70%. PC1065. 1060, 50%. 1063. 30%. 1061. And 20%. 1060. Okay? Now we're just going to start with the 70%. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. Just at the bottom of the clouds. Oh, and actually, I'm going to have my, I'm actually going to have my Chinese white in my hand as well. I'm just going to, at the bottom of these clouds here. I don't know if you've ever had a, taken the chance to kind of look at little rain clouds. I haven't studied them in any detail, but the bottom where the precipitation, she says, rain, in other words, collects at the bottom. So the bottom of the cloud is like the heaviest with the water. And because it's the densest with the water, it tends to be greyer. 
Next time you have a look at some, some, some like rain clouds, have a look and you'll see that the bottom, where the, most of the water is collecting before it rains, is actually at the bottom of the cloud. I'm just going to scumble in a tiny, tiniest little blend line with my 70%. Like that. And it's quite nice to have them going across the sun, I think, because it just makes them, makes an, an interesting feature out of the picture. Tiny little light touch blend line. I'm going to do this last one here. Okay. There we go. Right. Put that one down we can go to our 50% cool grey and just follow it round and that's what we're going to do with the rest of the greys medium firm pressure so just bear with me and we'll finish these off and you can put your clouds in anywhere you want you can have as many clouds as you want you can have any shape that you want you might not even want to draw in clouds, you might just want to do the Posca paint pen clouds that I'm going to show you in a second. It's entirely up to you. I would encourage you to be individual and just follow what you want to do. Because it just makes it original to you. 30%? Uh, yes, 30%. Just going over the blend lines that we leave. Medium firm. And I want it, I don't want them to be hugely dark rain clouds. So I'm going to leave the biggest space for the lightest colours. And I, you can just see the sun through that one. So I'm just going to go back to my 70%. There, that's better. Just see the yellow a little bit. 30%. And like I say, leave quite a bit of white because that's what we've got our china white in our hand for. So we're going to do the same as we did with the inside of the sun. We're going to blend it into the rest of the cloud. Okay. Let's clean the tip of this white pencil this time, shall we? So medium firm over everything. Can you see it just dampens down the colour but leaves the deepest pigment at the bottom? Just medium firm over everything. Now, what I thought was quite nice when I did my original one was, yes, these clouds are lovely, but let's just have like a, a little bit more interest. So I did two things. I took my 70% cool grey, and put it, on a, put it on a shallow angle, horizontal strokes, gently, little wisps, just indications of little wisps here and there, random. I'm hardly touching the paper, you, you barely want to see it. Now we're going to go to our Posca paint pen. And this is why I've got my kitchen towel. So, what I want to do is, can you see if I'm over here? Yes, I think you can. So I'm just going to press it onto the page until I get some of the fluid coming out. Because if I press it on the page directly, you tend to get a flood. Okay. Now I've got my kitchen all on standby in case that happens. Don't worry if it does, these are wax crayons and because they um, almost have like a, it's almost like a waterproof surface, like a wax, because it's wax, you go wrong with this, you catch it when it's wet, it'll wipe off straight away. Okay, so I'm just going to put, I'm just going to dab some little dots on and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a really complicated piece of art equipment, my little finger, and 
just dab. Make it look like little fluffy white clouds. And when I put the original in, when I did my darker colours up here, I did put a few in behind the behind the flowers at the top. But like I say, this is yours. You put them in where you want. Okay. And that is just about us done for today. There's one little detail, further detail, that I just want to add in, which is quite nice, and I'll tell you why. So I'm going back to my um, black pigment fine liner. Let me just, before I make a mess, wipe my fingers. Now, this is perspective, again, you're stepping into the drawing, you're stepping into the drawing. So we're being clever, we're using things to draw the eye into the centre of the page, into the centre of the design. The sun does this. When we come to place the little trees, they're strategically placed so that it draws your eye into the middle. If we just add two little birds at the side of the sun there it instantly draws your eye to the middle. And it just helps you with that. Um, it just helps you with your perspective. It just draws the eye right into the middle of that page. Just got a little hair there. Let's just take that off. Little doggy hair, little hopey hair. There we go. Right, so that's it for today. I think that's quite long enough for today. Um, I will finish this off um, in my own time. And the second tutorial, we will look at the river. And I know that's probably one of the tutorials you're going to be most interested in because uh, I've had the most feedback on that. But again, I promise you, it's easy. Any questions on this, by all means, drop me a line and I hope you have a go. Bye for now.